two monitors, a tangle of wires. What's going on, guys? Hey, welcome back to Roll Aid's Bench. This is Rowland. Actually, this is my mess from all of them messing around, recording and whatnot that I've already did. So I'm going to start out and tell you what I've already did. We are today reviewing the KPNC EJ230 NU XX by KTNC Cameras. That's my top choice for a mini bullet camera. Has the Sony 960X View had um, chip in it, which is excellent for IR um, detection and low light, whatever you want to call it. This is my backyard techie speak. It's one of the best chips out there right now, the X-View chips that are available in a mini bullet camera design. Also, it is color for daytime. So to answer some of you guys' questions, what can I do for a daytime and nighttime for those that want to record daytime? I was out playing. I was messing with both monitors and rigging different things. A little microphone for recording. And so I was playing with some different odds and ends to show you in the video in just a little bit what it looks like to first change the settings on your camera in order to make it the best night vision setup which is simple, a few simple settings that you change by the little joystick on the back of this camera. It's called the OSD or on-screen display. And you go in there and make a few simple setting changes and um, see the best that it will see at nighttime. For daytime use, we, have, we will remove the IR filter, by the way. This little glass piece, we remove it from the inside of the camera underneath the lens. It pops out simply. This is the cap that goes over the camera, and I have taped on the IR filter for one main reason. For those that want to record in the daytime, the color cameras, all of our normal point-and-shoot color cameras, have a little IR filter in them, which actually filters out the infrared light in order to get the best color quality, what we see with our eyes as color, because we're not seeing the IR that is in the natural daylight around us. So in order to get the best color, I, sw I would put, take this little lens that I just taped on there, you can see that, and I just slid it on and off. Not very scientific, I know. It's backyard engineering. You guys can figure out how you might want to do that. One other little thing that I will note here as we're talking about the cameras and then we'll get into the videos I've already taken, is for those of you that are searching for cameras, there's all kinds of options that you'll see people talk about. Lux. I see this question came up to me lots of times and it's on the forums all the time. What about this camera? Is this camera good? Look at this Lux rating. Guys, in general, you about have to ignore a lot of the Lux ratings. Stick with what's tried and true unless you want to spend a lot of money and try a lot of things. Um, what's happening is a lot of times people use a Lux rating and they actually are slowing the shutter down. On some chips they use something called SenseUp. What that means is the shutter opens up, and because it needs more light to expose it, it stays open longer. And then it shuts, and a picture is taken, and then opens again. Now that's exaggerated, but what happens is you then get a very stuttered view that you should be seeing right now, somewhere, in the little set-in that I'm going to set in, and or a blurred view, depending on how the settings um, you tweaked. Kind of depending on which ones you tweak, it'll get really blurred, which doesn't work for a rat running across or something else like that. Or for us when we're scanning with our rifles. Um, this has some options to change the shutter speed. I didn't use them. On the other cameras, I had some sense up options. I didn't use them. I want the camera to work at its full potential for quick shutter so I can quickly see what's happening or something uh, moving fast. So let's get to them videos that I've already recorded. So we're going to go in here on the first, I'm going to go to the second page hitting next. I'm going to go down and just toggle over till I get black and white. That's all I change there. Go back under shutter AGC. That's where we're going to do all of our adjustments. We're going to just run down here to um, the AGC, make sure that mode is on. Look at the big difference between off and on. We're under a full moon right now. No additional lighting. 
Here's an 850 IR light. So you can see what that's doing. So if I turn AGC off, the IR light, eh, it's helping a little. So we want AGC on. And it doesn't make a lot of difference, but I bump this up to one times. You have a, a 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, and 1. We'll return out of here. And that's it. It's that simple. You can, you can go down and adjust multiple other things. The ATR, if you adjust it on and off, you can see things lightened up just a little bit with no additional light. When I turn it off, it darkens a touch. What I've found though, if it's on, to me, I, I think things sometimes get a little more grainy at times. Um, but if I'm using an illuminator, like this 850 IR that I'm using right now, it's a stream light. If I go off and on, you can see a little difference. Um, so that will be, will be the one option that depending on your setup, you may choose to leave that on. Um, it really can be either way. It doesn't make a ton of difference. So we're going to go down here. I'm going to leave that on right now. I'm going to hit save all, push in on the button, exit. That simple. Your EJ230 is set up. There it is. You can see it just a little bit. 50 yard, just barely. Now it's 12. That's the 12 power. Let me dial the ring back here. This is 3 power, full moon, no other light. 25 yards and the moose. Now underneath that tree again at 15 yards, that's shading the full moon some. Um, again we hit it with light, boom. But look how good we can see at 3 power with this X view camera through a fairly um, cheap scope too for that matter you can see out there 75 you can make out the white dot of the swan at 100 let's hit it with some IR there we go there's 75 100 125 150 under a full moon you can do a certain amount of scanning and when you're ready for the shot, you could hit a momentary switch and confirm your target, take your shot. Pretty impressive. Now let's try the camera without the scope as a spotting scope under a full moon and see how good this EJ230 X-View does. Okay, here we are now, the, the EJ230 taken off from the scope and refocused for a spotter. This is a full moon. This is the quality you're getting at what I think is some of the best settings. And let's go up into the sky. There's our full moon. Looks like the sunshine. See a couple stars out there. Check that out. That is incredibly clear. There's my dog. It's been wanting to be petted. Corey. Hey, Corey. Yeah, there you are. There's a little IR illumination. So there's the shed that's right out my back door with IR illumination. And none. That is incredible. I'm impressed. Look at that. Now underneath in the shadow of the moon, we can't see the 15 yard quite as good, which is right there being blown out with my 850 IR. And here's the range we've been looking at. You see the uh, 25 next, actually pretty bright. And kind of in the background, see the 50, 75, 100. Um, get my IR here set up right. There we go. Blowing out, but there's the uh, 850 IR going way, way down. Um, does incredibly well with this full moon. First time I've got to try it in full moon. So here we are at the range in order to test the daytime use of the EJ230. 
This camera has the IR filter removed so it can be used with IR illuminators at night. And we are at 25 yards with Morse the Moose, a old yellow garage sale sign from 10 years ago, and a white and black 25 yard printout. We are seeing in black and white with the scope adjusted for the filter being off. I say that because the you will find here the the um, adjustable um, objective lens for yardage that's on the scope will vary slightly with the IR filter on or off and that's because the IR is a different wavelength and it's kind of changing the focus slightly. Right now we are getting IR in and we're going to go to color mode now. So I push the little OSD on the back of the camera I come down here to black and white, go to color, go over here to save all, and as always I wish the quality of the recording was as good as what I can see on the screen, but it usually isn't quite the same. So, yeah, I'm gonna, so now we've got some color going on. Now this is the color with IR filter removed. Um, the biggest thing you're going to notice here is I slide it over by hand. This is, a, this is backyard scientific here. You'll see the color come into form. Notice by blocking the extra IR light that's out here in normal daytime, we get um, a lot more normal color that we're used to seeing. You'll see though that my focus is slightly off. So let me tweak my focus now. Now you see the letters are just a touch sharper and for what we can see, the, mo the moose is kind of in the shadow of the sun. The sun is hitting the back side, so he's a little shadowed. But now our colors are correct. Um, focus is correct. So if you would like to use this camera for daytime and color use, it does great. That's color without the IR filter and color with the IR filter. And that's a wrap, guys. Hope you enjoyed this quick review. In the next couple video videos, I will be reviewing all the IR lights I've been talking about doing. Also, the Rolaids Night Vision 2.0 with video goggles and a scope cam. Spotter cam. Awesome. See you next time. We're going to talk about the EJ230 NUX camera. KPC EJ230 NUX. That just rolls off really hard. Anyhow, this is the camera.